So consumer price inflation in China tends not to follow the global trends in the way that PPI does, but the inflation sort of that we, that there was some inflation during COVID and that inflation has now disappeared. And so to take this chart as an example, this shows core inflation in China on an annualized basis. So core inflation is, is uh, downstream that the kind of the, the, the prices that consumers face rather than the prices, you know, when we look at PPI, it's the company, it's the prices that companies face. But the prices that consumers face can be straight into, into three broad groups. It can be straight into energy, food, and all other items. And basically, when economists tend to look at this, I mean, there's different views about which thing you should focus on. But here I'm looking at core inflation because food prices in China, as I'll talk about, tends to be influenced by other things. When you look at core inflation, before COVID, it was running at about 2% annualized. During COVID, it's running about 1% annualized. And then during 2004, it fell into deflation. So then again, a bit like PPI, that started to emerge between PPI inflation in China and PPI inflation in the rest of the world since 2024. There's also something quite specific happening with CPI in China, particularly since 2024, which is its deflation started to emerge.